and it has to be said that through pretty much the pro series that you being the oracle the six man with the background enabling teams we've seen the north star how you can help polaris and you know sometimes with uh the the seo background as well that can help out uh, uh the boys on smg maybe kami sama will have a highlight performance on the life stealer see how his his matchup's gonna fare but for galaxy race they're going for not as much of a playmaker here for Alacrity. We see often that he can pop off on the spirit heroes, but they want to make sure he has uh, another way to kind of scale really well and truly into the late game. The thing I like about this as well is they haven't yet revealed who's the position three and who's the position five. Like Tidehunter Lifestealer is a really strong lane. You know, you just get an orb of Venom up on the Lifestealer, can look to build that into an orb of Corrosion if you want to, but the kill potential is insanely high, especially if it is going to be paired together with something like, uh, sorry, paired against a Grimstroke. So a hero that can die pretty damn early if you've got the, the right movements for it. So... I mean, we've also seen Mizu play some fantastic uh, position three Tide Hunter as well. So, yep, not revealed entirely. It's going to keep uh, Boom guessing for the next little bit. See what Boom are looking for. They like to leave FBZ's hero to last. I would not be surprised Radiant if they don't, just to keep the tiny flex. And yeah, so the Beastmaster picked up a hero that kind of fallen off a little bit, still being getting banned, but not picked as much as the lacking but the control I hate it. yeah I mean, it's really good against like the rage of course you know you're always going to be able to get that bkb piercing Dyer disable or rather the rage piercing disable speaking of rage you know it's got such a long cooldown i want to say 18 seconds and uh you know in the super early levels it only lasts for three four five seconds so you're going to have a lot of downtime there you don't really want to be popping it just to farm the creep wave and it's into a double melee lane so yeah i feel like this beastmaster's pretty damn effective Radiant you can even just bad. put the boars in onto the tide hunter so that he's not able to you know run at your grimstroke and try and take him down Okay, so they're actually anticipating this to be a tiny mid for Yopage. They banned out the Sven. Another very strong pairing. Are you in agreement with how Galaxy Racer are looking to ban? Uh, I think you just want to take Five out the remaining. huge IO pairings, right? The Slark, the Sven, the Tiny. They're the big three in my eyes. So uh, I think they're, they're pretty happy with how things have gone so far. Because again, Boom have the last pick overall. You've got that flexibility with how strong we've seen IO in both mid and carry roles in the past month or so. So yeah, I, I think it's just Dyer pretty pretty back. standard drafting coming out here. And yeah, then they go into the Void Spirit, one of those gap-closing heroes, which you probably still are lacking a little bit on Boom, right? You can't commit to start the fight with a Relocate. You need something else that's going to be, be able to provide you with that extra little bit of, uh, of information even, just to allow a, a safe Relocate remain. to come in from Io and Tiny. Five I would really like the Tide to be played on Mizu. I think the... It's going to be super difficult to kill him this game. you got Kraken's shoulder to get rid of the raw. He's more than likely going to hood for the tiny burst and the grim stroke. And boom, a pretty committal into a fight. So if you can drop a Ravage on multiple heroes and go from there and then go for a position oh, five, that can offer some You know what I want potential. to see? What do you want to see? Let's hear it. My boy. My boy, Lich. Lich. Give me Lich. Ah, oh, that's okay. My cool. girl, Wyvern. All right, go. I'll yeah, take yeah. it. I was going to say, I was going to say, come on, man. You, you see the Wyvern. We got to get some some props given. That's uh, Talk to me about the Wyvern here. I mean, it's it's pretty good overall, right? You've got that nuke potential with a Splinter Blast that's going to be able to deal with the boars without doing too much to nuke the Creep Wave. Uh, you know, if the Beastmaster opts to go into this Helm of the Overlord Five build, then you've got the Winter's maybe. Curse. So if anyone's just standing nearby, it's going to be pretty heavily punished and of course tiny and io they're always kind of wanting to pair together so you just get the curse onto the io there's no save potential and io uh, just ends up falling to the the big log of tiny so don't hate the pick they're also pretty heavily physical damage oriented so even the cold embrace is going to be effective i think you need a playmaker here for your Ti i, I want to see io tiny together so some spirit-esque i think ember's got a Bear, oh, you could pick Storm into... I think Storm or Ember, but... What about the Quap? I think you need to control the Wyvern and Lion. I think there's too many ways that Galaxy Racer can control. Okay, they go the Link. This is... I don't mind the pick. It's very... 
Yeah, I don't mind it either. But I, I still see the same issue, though, right? Like, they're going to be relying so heavily on FBZ's Hawks to provide them with any kind of vision, right? Like, how do you get onto the back lines, onto the Wyvern? And, and hell, even, like, if you relocate, it's pretty obvious when the relocate's coming down. So Wyvern's one of those heroes that you can just, you know, Arctic burn, fly into the trees, and you're going to be pretty fine. So it's going to be a great laning stage for Palos and uh, CTM, for sure. But what happens beyond that? That's my concern. Yeah, the, the Ursa matchup versus the Tide is very favorable. Uh, I don't... Can they swap? Can you put... Can you try lane on Galaxy Racer? Put the Tide in the... The matchup versus the Beastmaster? Because he should be fine in that. I mean, you've got still Grim Ursa, Io to amplify, but I feel like... And Ursa is not the greatest in tri -lanes because he needs levels. This hero is still... Level 1, level 2 is definitely not as strong as what he used to be. But Galaxy Racer, also the Wyvern, kind of needs levels. The Lion as well. I, I Do you think they can go aggressive with the tri -lane? Because I don't... I think if you put Mizu on that lane, he has no game. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's the case as well. Um, what, was their, what was their position for? Again, the Lion. I mean, it might just be up to... Because the Io always wants to be paired together with the... Versa. so maybe you can just look to go the boots of speed on the lion and look to just focus entirely on pulling but jokem hasn't done that he's uh going into Repair. a bit more stats with the circlet i feel like you really need to do a lot of lane manipulation here and taking advantage of the fact that the eye always wants to be together with the ursa but not gonna be the case uh, i mean wyvern's an okay tri laner but it really only showcases itself once she's level three you know super early on you'll get the arctic burn off and you'll land it onto three <laughs> different people that is a lot of tips coming through for the idle yopage um but yeah outside of the arctic burn like it's a 42 second cooldown that is a long time where you've got you know pathetic uh right click damage coming through from the winter wyvern <laughs> couple of shout outs for the boys <laughs> Uh, this game, we also get the opportunity, of course, to, to shout out N1Bet. You can deposit with digital wallets and crypto and bet on the Pro Series 8 matches with N1Bet. Enter code BTSDOTA on bts.gg forward slash N1Bet and get an exclusive bonus without any wages. Then we we'll put in our money for this game. When well, we got a cracker of a matchup with Galaxy Racer against Boom. How are we feeling about this, though? I can't go past my girl Wyvern. I'm sorry. Like, it's, you pick the hero, it was either that or Lich, and both of them are fine. The battle I, I am a little concerned about this. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah. real. You know, the bias can only extend so far. It's going to take a great performance out of Mizu to come out of this top lane with any kind of net worth. Uh, I... I'm worried now. I, I'm, I'm really worried because I felt like Mizu. I was wanting to see him on the position three tight instead of the five, potentially on Polo, where he has, uh, you know, with Hood being unkillable against the Tiny and, and the Grimstroke, and then you offer so much counter initiation potential because they're, they're very heavy committal again, even with the Ursa picked up. But you're now, it doesn't matter. Like, if you go Hood on Mizu, Pelos will always have a way to kill you off no matter what. Now, we have also seen, remember in the uh, I-League, we were getting a, a lot more Ursas, and we saw Invictus Gamer playing with the Iro against the Night Stalker, and Firefly just obliterated that lane. So, you know, it's a little bit different, at least hero-wise, but still the tide against the Ursas is not favorable. They're doing a good job on the bot side by uh, Boom here. You put the first point into the split-up last, obviously, while the boards are super low, HP only 300. Uh, you want to make sure that you're able to use it to try and get the last hits on it. Boards get a, a ton of experience for those that don't know. So any supports against a Beastmaster, heavily prioritize killing it. But even with that, FPZ, he's made sure to keep the boards nowhere near the lane. Uh, you know, maybe when it's doubled up, he might finally get the kill onto one or even could just deny or let it uh, time out there. But they've even got all of the denies onto the range creep so far. That's three range wow. creep denies in this spot lane. So Boom's having a great time. I think the creep equilibrium will start to come back into the Galaxy Racer's favor once the, the tower can reset the lane. But yeah, like you were saying, at least with how they've been able to find the denies, a very solid start. This will give Tim some opportunity to start making some stacks. Let's hop the aggression. 
not really showing at the moment. So we'll take a look at how mid's going for Alacrity in your part of the 10th and 2 compared to the 9 and 3. Do you feel like this is going to continue to stay even? On the bot side? Or on the mid side? Uh, I feel like Yopaj always has the playmaking potential as like we can this. see here. He instantly <laughs> body blocks, gets Lacrity under the tower. Got to be careful, Lena, and, uh, well, not careful enough. Look like he just stayed there and took it. Off. Yeah, he's like, alright, yeah. inevitable was coming. Let me just do as much damage as I can. And I just. Radiance Courier has been. <sighs> we are seeing this tiny against, I'd say, unfavorable matchups. Like, I'd say maybe 60 40. Uh, we've seen Lena just, like, in, in game three, dismantle the Templar Assassin in the lane. And, you know, quite often that's a, the case against a lot of heroes, top lane, Palos. A bit low, but of course he's got Iron hand in hand, but yeah, Tiny always provides this outplay potential with that toss back. You've got a, a hero-esque in the tower just to provide all the damage, and, and this is going to help your out a considerable amount. Again, they're going on Palos. CTM providing the sustain. Palos a jump on four, but oh, it's always your can's lion will pick up the kill. That's a big one on the bear. I mean, that's enormous. Again, we were talking about how effective this Ursa is into the Tidehunter, but despite that, he's got a slight lead. He was just making sure he was able to secure the range creep there, not wanting to anchor smash the entire creep wave so that it does continue to push in towards their side of the, uh, the lane. Just wanted to make sure he got that range creep for the easy experience and build up closer towards that level 4. Uh, this is... This is huge in how they're playing the lane on Galaxy Racer. You just got the kill on Palace, so he just hit three. They reset the equilibrium. They're also gonna... Misery doesn't drag the creeps under the tower, so he'll further secure at least the place in the lane, and which is so incredibly important up against the, the Ursa. I mean, he doesn't even have boots coming out for him, so he's actually going for more of a build just to, to man-fight this lane, which I wasn't anticipating, but with all the stats and aggression he's gone for in the items, I feel like now Galaxy Racer are going to look to, to keep getting active, and that they're doing. Another stun on Palace. Doesn't have CTM with him just yet, but you see the resources they're really trying to force out. At least CTM was able to get the, the small camp pulled off. It's not one of the terrible small camps either, so at least two of the creeps should get pretty low. Maybe you're able to take out both of them. But yeah, easy farm. Lane pushes back. This lane is not gone for Palos as like it would have been hoping for. So he's happy to farm underneath the tower, even though long term it's not going to work out for him. <laughs> Let's see, how's bottom been transitioning? So in your dream is... So, sorry, sorry to try. Yeah. Apparently, for me it's fine, but apparently for the stream your mic is, uh, robot <laughs> Oh. It was better when it was only the issue for you. Alright, we'll see if we can get a fixture. Keep going. Uh, alright, let me have a look. Oh, that was actually ends up going up and down for a second time on the top side using the gush for maximum effectiveness. CTM just not getting the value that you would have liked. See, this is what happens when you get the IO away from the tiny. You know, they're best bros forever. And, uh, you know, Ursa just doesn't have that same kind of vibe. Is, uh... It Bit of issues with the, the vibe levels on the Ursa. So it was fine for you, the mic, was it? Yep, totally fine for me. It's only the stream. Um, are scanning. It's always the stream's issue. Uh, alright, well, I, I've uh, unplugged it, reset Discord. Hopefully there's a fix. Not entirely sure. None of my uh, frames have dropped, so it doesn't seem to be an internet issue, but hopefully it's resolved itself. We'll keep tabs on it. Sure. In the meantime, I mean, there's a, there's still a game going. Yopage, with that uh, early net worth advantage, he's only 700 net worth ahead of the Lena at the six minute mark of the game with the Invis rune, making the rotation towards the bot side. Paulson with some good defensive positioning, oh making sure he's not the one getting caught out here. And honestly, even with this lane pushed in as deep as it is in your dream, he's going to be fairly safe underneath this tower. Look out for fallen rock. Radiance middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Radiance okay, he just gets the carry with the tree throw. I got a bit of a pause. Well, that might help us in terms of the uh, the audio issues with the, uh, the pause, just giving us a little bit. The question is, what could the fix be? 
How do we fix the issue? Mm. Maybe we just need to surrender to the robots, you know? Maybe that's the issue. That is uh, a potential. I don't know why it's still... Huh. All right, you keep, you keep going. So let me see if I can find a fix. It's a game I'm pausing. For all we know, now, since you unplugged it and plugged it back in, it's working again, right? So we won't know until the, uh, the delay catches up on the stream, but we've... Uh... We've still got a game going. FPZ, again, having a good time on this bottom side of the map. The rotation through from Yopage didn't result in too much in terms of damage, but, well, with this uh, ghost that they've been able to pick up with the Helm of the Dominator, probably one of the best creeps that you can honestly get uh, super early on into the, the laning stage. You know, it's a small creep that gets given a whole bunch of extra H uh, HP, and you're able to put a ton of harass in onto the tower. The raw being used onto In Your Dream. Good use of the Cold Embrace to be able to save him from the majority of the damage coming out. And they might even look to turn it around onto Yopage as the GP comes in from Joe Camp, but just not feeling too confident to be able to continue the aggression on In Your Dream. Especially with CTM nearby. I've got the Hawk Vision as well, so they see there's no extra reinforcements. In Your Dream's actually still sticking in the tree line, Yopage. I got another Hawk to scout him out. But quick fingers with the rage into the TP, so the life still will make it away in regards to Polo Sun. He does not have that same capability as Boom. We'll pick up a kill on the Wyvern and look to transition this for the tower. Dyer's middle tower. Haste. Radiance bottom right, well, bot side, yeah, the tower. tower. Looking to get transitioned into. CTM taking a few of those tower hits, just wanting to make sure that the creep wave survives for as long as possible. And uh, that ends up costing him his life with Alacrity. Hit the backstab. You're going to be able to get FBZ slowed down here. So well, I was about to say an easy light strike array able to land it onto him. But eventually you'll clean up the kill regardless. What, what are we getting? Up to the other side. So Inner James just swap lanes at the moment. It's gonna combine with Mizu. To get the kill on Timzo. I trust my end. Okay, looks like they'll uh, chase him down. So uh, a nice one for the life sword of fine. He's a little bit behind in regards to the net worth. And again, Mizu's had a very, very solid showing. Mizu has, in your dream, probably suffered a little bit, but uh, I don't know, Palos is probably sitting around the, the same sort of uh, vein there, down towards the bottom of the net worth charts. Although, despite how the early game went for Yopaj, having a fantastic time, Paulson, he's going to go down, but it's still four heroes committed for a slippery Winter Wyvern, who was able to delay a lot of this time, and Alacrity, he's using that space to creep ahead on net worth, and even look to take this tower in the mid lane, much more valuable for them. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structure. It's hard to know if the, the mic's fixed or not. We've <laughs> at least seen how I can uh, attempt a solution is unplugging in and replugging in, but I again I, I will I'd, keep listening in. I mean, I don't I don't believe is this attack. is gonna provide a solution. We got a T1 tower mid. Dyer's <laughs> top tower has fallen. That's a it's a tower for tower trade though, so Seem pretty fine. It, it, it's fixed. Okay. All right, easy. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure unplugging and replugging fixed it. All right, so we uh five minute delay. You love to see it. <laughs> Hopefully, I haven't re. <laughs> re you didn't do verbally. something else, did you? <laughs> well, I mean, I did just recently. <laughs> you what? I did do something recently. Oh no. I blame you if it's, <laughs> if it's that issue. But we've got a smoke coming out here, multiple stuns. You've got Joe Cam who's going to be able to pair it together with uh, Alacrity, not needing the figure of death for it though, and they're still going to be able to clean up the uh, Helm of the Dominator creep. So a lot of valuable money going through for policy. Ah, here we go. We can focus up now. Boom, looking for a smoke here. Pods, the blink reveal will jump straight on top. Let's kill onto Yokam. No messing around. It probably were, were more happy if they could get a pick off on a core, but Yopage is having quite the game with moment. 4 0, second in net worth. He's looking to try and transition this into his second item, Echo Saber. 
I don't have the Echo Saber. You know, you always want to make sure you've got that mix of magic and physical. The downside is it's into a Wyvern, right? So it needs to be Polison that gets gone on every single one of these attempts, because if you don't, I mean, they don't have much magic damage outside of that original Avatos burst. So as long as Polison's in range, you know, he's only got the one point of the Gold Embrace so far. I wonder what he's even going to talent into. When I've been playing Wyvern recently, I just haven't been putting that talent in if it is a heal game, just because you get more value out of just more points in your skills as opposed to uh to having you know the plus 35 damage or the plus 25 hps radiant looking to smoke up instant blink away from your page however still we see even lean is having an exceptional performance what do we feel like though is going to be the big timing around you know the next five minutes what are we really looking for to break open this game for either team or yeah, for either, one in particular? Yeah, for either team. Well, Yopage again. In and out. Oh, man. Yopage on the tiny is such a scary, scary threat. I mean, it, it is going to need to be all on Yopage, really. Like, he lucked out with being able to pick up the uh, the haste rune. He's looking to try and hunt Polison, but he's playing cleverly around the trees, making sure that he's not showing in lane too much. Well, he might have gone for the extra greed with the, uh, the splinter blast there, but instead, they're going to look to group up around the mid lane. Maybe... Uh, try and smoke once the lion's up and available. They've got the ravage, and uh, they need they to look at try Roche. And... Well, they do. They might have a bit of spidey senses happening though. Although they'll get the sense if anyone does try and make the rotation with FPC's hawk in a really nice position. Well, this could be All a right. way to to break it open a little bit now. Palace probably still needing defusal, considering the. <laughs> I'm still so surprised that that lane went as bad as what it did for the Ursa, but. I think they'll maybe look to farm up for another two minutes or so. Yopage is not going to have another item by then. What about FBZ on the Beastmaster? So he's still going to the Helm of the Overlord. No difference there. It makes sense. I mean, these guys want to be playing around each other a lot once... Excuse me, you get your timings. Uh, you could just look to park the the tiny alongside the grimstroke and the beastmaster you can kill essentially any hero in the game outside of maybe the tide hunter because he's going to have the kraken shell uh and then you just pair that together with all of the extra bonus right click damage that you get from the helm of the overlord auras tiny still becomes a right clicking beast and you can look to rotate through ctm and palace at any time all right well mizu he's got his blink completed now so we see if galaxy race is going to look to to make a, a smoke they, yeah, that's what they were waiting for all that time. That's why they didn't look to contest Roche, because they didn't quite feel confident just yet. So, despite the fact that attack. Mizu had a good time coming out of that laning stage, she slowed down a little bit relative to these other heroes, which, you know, it kind of happens when you're up against someone that has the flash farming potential of a, uh, a Tiny. You have the Ursa, of course, buffed up by the Io, and Tiny's got the cleave. Do you want to see... Life still a building to a halberd, or do you think this might be a Sunj keep it at there and then go Sunj and Yasha later? Because the only reason I bring that up is I feel like he's he's not the hero to win them this game over. I really believe it's Alacrity's job on the Lena to to be the win condition because the Ursa life still matchup is is not great. It's not. I, I feel like Halberd's a perfectly fine item just because it provides you not just the disarm, right, but just the passive evasion against the likes of a Tiny, the Ursa, hell, even just the Beastmaster with all of his creeps. So I feel like that's going to give you a ton of value. We are getting closer and closer to Palos, the Fusil Blade. It's one more camp until this one is done and dusted. And that's all we're looking for. The Opos is pretty close to Echo, too. I mean, I guess there are a few item timings that are going to hit around the same period for, for Galaxy Racer. You know, you've got Alacrity looking to build into the uh, the BKB very close to it. Uh, only, actually, it's a, a little bit further away on the Blink Dagger on Jokam than I was expecting. Uh, Sanj, of course, like we've been talking about, nearly built up for In Your Dream. Paulson doesn't really matter. You know, at this stage of the game, Wyvern is just really strong on abilities alone. If they do not blow up heroes from Galaxy Racer, I'm a bit worried on what this Diffusal can do in a fight. Versus the Life Stealer, versus the Tide. They might look to blow up Palos, but again, CTM always hiding in the wings. It's such a I mean, key you component. Can't, you can't commit onto the Ursa. Yep. You know, you've got the, the relocate to save. You've got, of course, just the healing coming out from CTM. He's finished up the mech if he wants to send it out to him. And then, of course, you've got the Enrage and the Aegis to be able to burst through. So you need to pick off someone else. Like... It would have to be like FBZ or Yopage are the ones for me. They're going to try and force at least a hand and 
Find out where CTM is. They've still got a pretty solid ward placement from Galaxy Racer. Kind of to the, the southeastern side behind this T1 tower. They're just putting Mizu on the front line. 1800 health. Not easy to burst him down. Nice D ward as well from CTM. So it does look like they, they trade observers. They also got rid of the Hawk there as well. So it was a really nice preemptive sentry placement there by uh, by Polison. Oh, Polo? Hawk did just expire, but he was underneath vision. Arctic Burns oh, already on cooldown as well. So maybe get the curse maybe off. Not. TPs are coming through. So have a buyback to rejoin, but boom, they've heavily committed in their position. And Mizu would just drop the Ravage. There's no way to keep alive the Tinies. Well, CTM tried to put an attempt in. The relocate just not fast enough, but want. still, they're trying to come in the area as Pella still has the Aegis advantage for another 50 seconds, but they're sticking around at the moment. They've compromised their position, however, there's still Pallas, his left hand's lose himself, the Ayo, it didn't drag him away. Mizu gush up in a couple of seconds, Alacrity so fast as well, but it's going to double back. It won't chase down the bear, so a two for one. And you've got to be pretty happy considering you've wasted pretty much all of this Aegis duration. Paulson tried to get really greedy there with the Winter's Curse, but again, once you use the Tiny Avatos combo, you can just Cold Embrace and you're pretty damn safe. Kind of surprising that they weren't able to clean up another kill, though. You know, CTM was in a really vulnerable position just on the top side, wasn't able to drag the uh, the Ursa away quite the distance. Paulus, he was able to get away just because he's got decent movement speed. He had the, uh, the Tumblr's toy to be able to give that extra little space. And, uh, of course, the Diffusal Blade, if he did try and dive a little bit deeper, just turn around, use it onto the nice Tide Hunter. As long as you're not dealing damage, you're not going to get that Kraken Shell uh, to be able to remove it. Mizu. Oh, my no, the Dude, nice play. I've got to ask this man one day how his reactions are this good. I, I feel like Radiant I see way too many games where he is just blinking away, like, miller, miller second timing. He must just always have his finger on the blink key whenever he's like, you know, not doing something else in the game. Just, uh, I, I just cannot say enough. Uh, the amount of games yeah. I've seen him actually just blink away to hold the life, but in, in regards to this, they know the Ravage is on cooldown, so this is a big window here for Boom. So they're, they're not as reliant on cooldowns, and we can see how they just, again, nighttime with their vision control is such a powerful thing for the Beastmaster. What have we here? Well, they're going to have their timing again soon on Galaxy Ray. So like I said, I was a little surprised that they didn't get more out of that attempt, which just meant that, you know, they were able to turn around and then just look to take both the bottom tier 2 and the mid tower. But uh, next time around, you'll be level 2 Ravage. So a little bit more duration, a little bit more damage. And also in the meantime, you've been able to get up to a little bit more farm on in your dream as well. He's got the Orb of Venom queued up, but if he wanted to go Halberd, he's pretty damn close to finishing it. I think only about 50 gold away. <laughs> oh, FPZ's got the Helm of the Overlord completed as well. Wait. <laughs> you double check the mic's going crazy again. Let me have a look. <laughs> Chat's just trolling No, me. it's fine. Yeah, they're just trolling. <laughs> I mean, some of them are saying they want the robots back. You know, they they've developed Stockholm syndrome, and you know they're uh, <laughs> they're missing them a little bit. But I, I feel like this is better for everyone, especially people speakers. <laughs> there are some uh, some good some good copy passes going around right now. All right. We got the, the Helm of the Overlord timing for FBZ. We'll see what this Black Dragon can do just to control the map. But it's been. Even after the Aegis usage, we just saw it, it didn't matter. Uh, the big factor was the Ravage cooldown, which is back up now for Galaxy Racer. We'll see what they can look to do with it. But Alacrity and Yokam, the only two heroes for Galaxy Racer down bottom, and Alacrity's in trouble. Toss up into the air. It'll give them ample time to have the follow-up control thanks to FBZ. And well, Yokam's about to pop up through the ward position. And she's got the Arcane Rune at the ready. Quicker fingers though from Yokam. We'll, we'll get him back out to safety, uh -huh. but that's a big kill to find considering Alacrity was top of the net worth. 
That's true, and it, it, it's just like Radiance I've talked a few times the other day about the, the snowball okay. and flow on effect. And this is a little bit deep here. Yo Kim, they'll drop the ravage. CTM's gonna try and charge up the relocate. They need to hold it back with the hex. Nice oh, Yo Kim, beautiful timing. Can they still go through him? CTM nonetheless has got so much sustain for the Ursa, but it is not enough. So they'll kill him off. Curse will give them time to reset. But Yo Paj, all the AOE damage in the backline gets rid of both the supports. They're looking for the escape having You tie it, infest it up. Boom. Gonna be cautious how long they stick around considering he's back alive on Alacrity. Looking to try and chase down CTM Tether up to the northern side. See, just the control is not there with the Ravage on cooldown and no assistance from Yokam. So, Boom are playing this game really well off the back of the cooldowns. Yeah, and it's probably just gonna be the same story as what we saw on the bottom side. What I was saying before is, you know, I've talked about snowballing a little bit. If if you get an extra kill from that previous Ravage on the bottom side of the map, you don't lose your tier 2 tower, you don't lose your tier 1 mid, which means that they don't have the outpost, which means that Alacri doesn't die, which means that you're in a better spot to be able to take that team fight. So just like, tiny little things of just missing out on one hero kill goes a big way towards, you know, heavily impacting the state of the game. And now, well, Roche is going to be back up in 35 seconds. You've got a Beastmaster with the Hawk that's going to be constantly scouting it out if they want to. And uh, Ravage still having 88 seconds, which means that it's going to be very difficult for Galaxy Race to try and take a, a team fight around that. They will have the Winter's Curse available, and it was a pretty good one on Polison that time around, making sure that the, uh, the Helm of the Overlord creep was hitting away into... Uh, this this small little valley here to the right of In Your Dream, but it still wasn't enough. How the heck is Tim's got Aetherland's Ag Shard? It's been so farmed. Mm -hmm. Oh, we saw what the uh, the Dark Portrait could do last time against a Life Seal. Yeah, not it's pretty again. damn good. And I mean, a Wyvern and a Lion don't really like someone running at them with massive movement speed. Can't this is wildfire. look at the sustain they're gonna have from boom as well you've got the the vlads or well i guess the helm of the overlord but of course the, the vlads component the ire we've seen just be such a, a huge x factor into these fights or well, alacrity's underneath the sentry just out of range yeah, now cool. ctm got another we'll drop it but oh man that's it okay he's out meanwhile i like this play from boom they're gonna smoke instantly as three Looking ahead to the opposite side of the map, considering they always have this cool relic showed. factor. Put a blink nice in from stuff. Yopaj. Still Inkswell, toss away. It'll break the soul bind, but he needs to get rid of the silence on the tide. We'll be able to do so. The Ravage is ready and waiting for Mizu, but he hasn't found an opening just yet. But the rest of the team, they're too far on the back line to be able to utilize the ultimate. In fact, it was still on cooldown, so nonetheless, they just lose the tide. They're going to lose the rest of the heroes as well as Polisson. That's to sacrifice his life. The cold embrace will only Invest. delay the inevitable. They're in your dreams. Swing on over. Infest giving you some bonus help, but it'll pop out. Recognizing it's just not enough. And oh, for boom. And what a play from them. That smoke instantly looking to connect. And now they can lead that into the Roche pit. And that's on the back of the Hawk as well. The Hawk is the thing that in, in, enabled that team fight. It was placed just to the right of where the Sentry Ward is inside of Radiance Triangles. So gave complete vision on the back lines there. FBZ, the information he's providing has been invaluable for this team. Paulson with a very, like, he was a little antsy. He used the Cold Embrace on himself after a great four staff out by uh, the... Wait, who the hell had the four staff? Mizu does. I... Oh, okay, yeah, so he, he forced up and I was looking at the Wyvern, I was looking at the Lena, the, the Lion, and I was like, what? There's what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, you're a punch, what a pop! BKB instant, and now you don't get this big blink smoke reveal. Please stop the TP with the curse. They're gonna be cautious. They group up on the back line of Alacrity. Looking to try and cut down CTM, but he's splitting away for the potential of a big ravage onto multiple heroes, but Mizu's still finding the angle. No one's died just yet, but you need this big wombo combo. Dream, they right? haven't found it. In your dream, actually looking to face off the bear. But they'll reset and boom, they're happy with that. They live to survive another day in wasting smoke. Oh, the dive bomb. Polison. Oh, the dragon. Oh, no. Fly he... away, Polison. He's five seconds Mizu's away. got force. Top okay. Tower is under attack. Just how boom are playing these fights, it's just beautiful to watch. The, the recognition of you have to Delta Split as far away as possible away from the Ravage. This is the only way they win the fight on Galaxy Race if it hits 4-5. 
in it. So uh, it's going to take a lot. You know, it feels like Boomer splitting this team fight perfectly. Radiant's it never seems out. like Alacrity's in a position to be able to follow up from a, a big sort of damage. And that's not honestly on him. It's a, it's a forced Radiant's error coming out from Boom well. because of how much dominance they've got in terms of vision this game. I... Their siege is not the greatest. Urs has never been known as a, a great tower siege up, but an IO and tiny the dragon, then though. on the other guard. Yeah, that's true. Apollo's got no mana. Is he looking to catch any stragglers out? Do you like the fact that Polis is going into the Blink Dagger next? You know, I, I'm i a big fan of going Aether Lens. It's probably a little bit greedy on a Winter Wyvern, but this game in particular, you need to make sure that you're catching out someone sitting on the back lines, uh, notably FBZ. I feel like he's the one that's enabling every single one of these engagements. But then again, like... Whoever you curse, you can just get the save off with CTM. Like, his timing always going to be there with the relocate. Yeah, there's, there's big issues right now in how you can take these fights. I mean, we saw Alacrity made the attempt on bursting through the uh, the IO. Are they going to try and jump Paulos? Oh, now CTM will reveal himself. And I don't know if you can do off. that. I mean, it, just with these two, like, is it worth getting rid of the Aegis? Putting two huge cooldown things on, you know, on the sidelines? Like, they can just then group up and look to push on the top side. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. The one area that Palos might be, I was about to say lacking a little bit is levels, but that's just compared to the rest of his cores. He's, he's uh, you know, level with in your dream, and they've been able to pick off Palos, and that is one of the best high ground defense tools that you've got. Yeah, FBZ is going to jump in as well. Relocate, coming in. He's got the BKB. Let's see if he's going to have enough time to get it off. Now with the back line, there's the relocate. They'll jump instantly on top of Yokam, so dealing with both of the supports, but they've got to be cautious. You cannot group up for Mizu. He's raiding the rings. They're doing a great job to stop the blink dagger. They didn't bring back Palos as well, but still they've got at least three heroes behind him. I just don't think you can take that team fight 3v5. You know, it's well, 3v6 technically with the Aegis. We've seen Galaxy Racer being a, a team that can play off the back of the Aegis timer. It's, I believe, a minute, yeah, about a minute, three seconds CTM. left. This would be a big kill, though. See if Alacrity can get it. He's just going to join as well. Okay, this might give them an opportunity. Down for 40. Relocate as well as on cooldown for 40. So if he wants to buy back and rejoin, they won't have that Radiant's option again. Yopaz, my god. Yeah. <laughs> I just... When... Uh, there, there are... F no games, it feels like, where Tiny or Yopaj is just not taking over. Uh, mm -hmm. This guy is just on another level. Well, he creates so much space for the rest of his team. And, you know, the only time you like straight up, quote unquote, carry a game is on his TA. Maybe but he's doing a lot to top. kind of go away from that point with his tiny performance. <laughs> he's been the tower hitter. He's <laughs> been the... <laughs> These hawks, though. Fallen. That range is too big. I'm sorry. Like, Jeez. it is way too big. Has he got a hawk talent? Bottom tower is under attack. No, not anymore. With the, uh... I mean, they weren't able to get anything out of that uh, that kill onto CTM. Aegis was at least reclaimed, so that's a nice little bonus. Palace will be up to level 18 soon enough. I'd mm. say that's the key timing that they're hoping for here on uh, on Boom. They're making an attempt down bottom again. Galaxy Racer, this time without the Aegis. They have a very good ward in the, in the position, so it might just be enough to pop the smoke. <sighs> Why? But they missed him. And Paulson, I... It's happened to him a couple of times now. I think he needs to play a bit further back because if he's playing right underneath that tower, you're going to get Avatos comboed and just die, blow up instantly. I mean, it just Fork fills... Again. Yeah. Gives him complete information. And you've got... There we go. Agnum's completed now on, on Timps. So... you got this Dark Portrait online. I mean, life still is very underfarmed. But it's still such a nuisance. He's nuts, though, man, right? Like, he's yeah. got Aether Lens and he's got Psychic Headband. Look at how and far away. Smoke. I think he's, these are multiple smokes that are getting them nothing on Galaxy Ray, so they're trying to find just an inkling of a way back into this game, but it doesn't seem they like... They have to do it, though. They have to. Like, they've got no other option. It's just, boom, with the good positioning oh, coming through. Smoke Paulson. pops and you got bored. Like, 
uh, playing games of Beastmaster when you're suffocated inside the base is just so difficult. Like, wh where do you go? That You've got this early Aghanim shot. He's got four hawks on that map. <gasps> Like the fact that FBZ somehow is fourth in net worth is, is zero two and eight, but the value that he's providing the team solely off the vision is just immense. I would probably say only Slark rivals it, right? Like you never want to be in a losing team, and everyone's like, "Where's the vision?" I'm like, "I'm sorry. Do, do you want me to put up the vision? Do you want it to get instantly dewatered and feed them more golden experience?" Yeah, pause. Right, go ahead. <laughs> It, there's really some of those games, isn't it? When you're against the tiny, it's like, where do I actually where can play? I go? Where do yeah, I play? What do I do? And the issue is, is that he's 11, 1, and 3, and now he can be your tower siege. Like, it, you can just pair the tiny and iron together through the old fashioned days where you walk up higher gun and, or you've got this yep. rap potential. It's it's now not just the iron bear together. It's. Probably I mean, the only thing I'd wait for is his shard, right? Like, he, he that's the one thing that he's lacking to be this consistent tower siege. I mean, if they walk into their vision with the, the use of Hawkey, then, of course, it's going to be a, a nice situation for, for Boom. But I think they could just look to sit back a little bit more. Aegis, uh, I mean, could be available in five seconds, depending on how long the Roche respawn timer is. But They need to hold a high ground. Not, they got refresh the on Mizu. Way. See if they can play around in. the area. Look at the jump once again on top of the Winter Wyvern and Polis. not burst it down this time, but Polis going to jump in forward as well. The Infest Health, is it going to be enough to be able to get the Winter's Curse off? It is. Now with the Ravage on top of the back line as well, but Mizu, he needs to find a secondary use out of it. The first one's done nothing. As the rest of Boom can now just overwhelm Galaxy Racer. They'll bring down Alacrity. They're looking for In Your Dream next too. A force up from Mizu, looking to reposition the carry, but they might just go through it before the Rage Heap is out. They'll do just that. Your camp to four. Mizu's next. A nice blink timing with inside the base they go they want to look, look to put five in the grave the buybacks are available still haven't seen the second ravage too but it is all boom in this game one yeah i mean the the tiny he's not going to be sorry the tide hunter is not going to be able to do anything on his own you know the buyback being used from joe cam has to be very careful about his positioning because with that bkb picked up on yopage he's got the status resistance talent as well he's not afraid about going in super deep like this Hollows. ctm so nearby of course and they'll get the full set <laughs> Dude, this hog my god They've got Roche now fall back on. 19,000 net worth lead. All it's done is just oh, grow, grow, sweet. grow for Boom. They've had no answer. Try and make one. Refresher shot as well. Uh... Smoke pops. Now Yopage again. There's the vision information. They're looking for an infest bomb, but they're just walking it down mid. They know, they know exactly where they are. Do not go up that higher gun. A long wrap around. But Miz is showing, like, this needs to be the surprise on the the big Ravage here. They'll jump on forward. Hex is out. They'll drop the Ravage. Not actually just yet to the last second. Can they burst him down? The tentacles clip on the Io. So Palos doesn't get the relocate back to safety. A That's beautiful a nice curse. curse. They'll catch out the Io. The Sintel Conqueror. That actually stopped this right clicks. To finally get the kill, but he's got the buyback redrew, and the free doesn't matter. The net worth lead, it's too high. As Boom will just overwhelm them once again by the triangle. The voice lines are out. It looks like the game is in the bag. You got to ban the IO. Get rid of it. This hero has done so much for the side of Boom. You couldn't kill anyone because of the IO factor. Uh, I don't know. I would say Beastmaster's probably done a little bit more. Just in t like the reason that you haven't been able to kill anyone is because they've just had complete vision advantage over you. You know, any kind of movements that you've tried to make has been instantly counted out. <laughs> How long does that stun last for? Too Two long. seconds. Two seconds. My god. I mean, it's sticking in it. Probably has to be about 99. Yeah, 98. All right. I am full. I mean, you're going up against third Roche advantage now. And Boom are going to try and smoke his five. They sense a sign of weakness. Yo, Pai just 15, 1, and 6. 
Looking to add some icing on the cake here in regards to his KDA. He's just stalking in your dream. Trying to catch out any of the stragglers. Life still. Make it back. Dyer are scanning. You got the it rabbit. feels like you need literally the perfect um, Winter's Curse. Combo attack. that together with the Ravage. Like you, they're gonna do their best on Galaxy Racer. Oh and no, they'll cut that away. A nice timing in the infest, Palos. A heavy commitment roars out as well. Got to be cautious how deep you go. You don't want to compromise your own positioning. The curse locking too, but the Ursa just doesn't have enough damage. The timing from Alacrity a little bit too early as well with the Laguna Blade and Yopaj just pushing them further and further back inside the base. Not just Yopaj, you got the Lifesteal, the Dark Portrait running at them as well. And that's just an extra layer of siege as well for the high ground. Bottom Last set of barracks left standing. Radiance bottom barracks are under Yo, Paj, standing there like a statue in the trees. Ominous. Mizu's gonna pop. Well, now they can just consistently Radiance stop the blink. And Inner Dream just can't man fight. Yopaj jumping instantly. Just two right clicks. Half of the health from Mizu gone. Full set of barracks. He'll jump in. Ravage and only controls the tiny. And you still got CTM waiting the wings. Out to safety he goes. It's territory. They're sticking around. I want to try and have one last fight, but uh, without double ravage, feels like the hopes are gone for Galaxy Racer. I, uh, yeah, against Mega Creeps is, is too much. Like, no, I'm, I'm not even gonna. <laughs> not even gonna humor it. No. Again, dude, Especially not now. Ah, this is all the Rockman show. You know, have the Tidehunter for the Ravage effect. And Palos has still got the Aegis as well. He's only down to half health, even after Laguna. They'll push back in your dream. It's a beautiful curse, but the damage from the Ursa, it doesn't even seem to just be enough. Now that Yopage actually gets involved, I'll kill off the eye, but it's a four on four. Make it a three on four. They're just trapped inside their base. The throne's exposed. The G's are dropped them for boom. An incredibly convincing game one performance. No cheating. 29, 27 kills for boom. How many were Yopaj uh, involved in? And how many did he get the last hit for? Uh, probably involved in about 25 out of the 27. Mm -hmm. And how many did he get the last hit for? Um... 17? 18 and 1, he was. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy amount of involvement coming through there from Yopaj. 18, 1, and 6. So he was involved in 24 out of the 27 kills that game. Don't look at Tiny... his damage dealt. Oh my god. Oh, 44,000 in a 37 minute game. It's Jesus Christ. But compared to everyone else, it was, it was off the charts. Like... Yeah, Yopage and FBZ one boom that game. I'm gonna. That's the hill I'm gonna die on. Ah, uh, that's that's understandable considering how well Boom looked. I mean, that was what a showing, man. I, why you gotta do me dirty with the background? What the hell? What do you mean? I'm just praising our new overlords. Man, chat was uh, they they uh, I liked the the copy pass that was going on, and then now we got Mister Destructoid. Okay, the the overlords they're rising, they're rising. Boom, continuing to rise as well. They're stonks with a performance like that. 18, one and six for Yopaj. There's no surprise on why he was the hot commodity through the kind of you know break that we had, and and all the pickups from the roster swaps, and and he's showing why there is big issues right now with how they're able to deal with boom i mean just overall you're saying you you, you want to die in the heel of the the tiny and and, and the beast master that's very understandable with how well they're able to perform i think ctm of course with how the eye was able to to play this game just making pretty much everyone unkillable i mean galaxy race they had 12 kills overall they need a complete 180 if they're going to head into the second game with some opportunity to take this because i think boom just methodical gameplay just absolute methodical gameplay where you control the map you suffocate them inside the base you get the ages advantage you have all the hawk vision you ever want it makes it so impossible every smoke from galaxy racer got them nothing out of the map and boom just pretty much f i mean they died 12 times you didn't really say almost flawless gameplay from them and that is a treat for us to watch now i'm just going to make a prediction before we even get into the lobby for game number two 
I feel like that tiny hero is going to be first phase banned or the first pick of the entire yeah. draft, because why not? Yeah. I mean, we've seen Alacrity have really, really strong performances in the group stages with the... I want to see the Io band as well. I would not be surprised if Boom just goes straight Io pick. Uh, I think CTM, when we've seen him play it throughout the groups as well, they've looked really strong and how he's able to perform on his old roster on Neon. They looked very, very good with it as well. But in regards to Boom, able to take game one here in our last series of the night. Let's see if Galaxy Racer can hit back and force a game through. 